father had this great dream. He wanted to see his children end up as businessmen. So every Thursday he insisted that we go to his office. To pass time, I used to draw in the margins of his account books. When Akbar Padamsi was five years old, he stepped on a rusted nail and developed septicemia. For the next 10 years, he could not speak. All through my school years were in silence. And um, in some way, I'm looking back, uh, it uh, um, drove me more towards the image. And even now, I feel that um, uh, um, one should still be interested in images uh, uh, and uh, not be too worried about uh, um, art. Desire is a very major force in one's work. In fact, desire is uh, the originating power of the work. So we have to give desire a very important place. It is that which makes you do the work, makes your hand move, makes the form emerge. There never will be not for me or for anybody. Because the, it is a never-ending quest. And it is uh, even more than a quest. It is uh, the path of desire in which everything, you know, worlds are thrown up as paintings, sculptures, everything is coming up, you know, lives are thrown up. It's a whole um, eclosion. My mother and father came from the village, from Saurashtra. My mother did not know how to read and write, but she brought the whole tradition of the village. And everything she knew was by heart. She used to sing the bhajans of Mirabai. She used to tell us stories from the Ramayana and the Mahabharata. Well, actually, the way things happen is that I don't have an image in my mind which I'm projecting onto the paper. Uh, it uh, develops slowly, and I am the first spectator of the emerging image.
an exploration of form and not only an exploration of form also formation how does the form form itself why does it take certain proportions what are the proportions that is the basic uh, yantra of destruction simply because uh, when you got a rectangle it's a firm perfect form but the uh, what uh, the other rectangle the inside the counterpoint of the rectangle is this so i take the counterpoint of the basic rectangle when i start thereby uh, destroying the order of the canvas which is pure and virginal and white there is nothing on it and i have nothing to say and nothing to add i can only uh, add something or say something if i disturb the order and this is the first dynamic gesture of the chaos the yantra of chaos from which i re established order One of the places which I love very much is Girgaon. It is also the place where my Sanskrit professor, Dr. Godbole, stays. A walk through it is a nostalgic experience, since it has retained its original character. When I began to read Freud I was fascinated because this was the first philosophical theory that I had come across apart from psychoanalysis it was a philosophical system an organized intellectual system it was the first formation of the mind a new world totally a new world and an understanding of the uh, mind as phenomena um, and the whole uh, sphere of the unconscious mind uh, and uh, the dream life and the understanding of dream, dreams everything became meaningful like the dream became meaningful the whole unconscious life became meaningful it basically there are three areas there is the infrastructure the structure and the suprastructure you begin with the infrastructure which is uh, purely yantrik that is diagrammatic and you are aspiring towards a suprastructure which ultimately will remove all the superficialities of representation and will be pure suggestion somewhere in between is a structure which has to be used as a sign to represent the image but here in india I'm not starved of images because life gives me so many images. I travel by train when I go to my studio. I see so many people in the train. That's why if I get a chance I go by the second class. When I say desire, we have another word uh, that is ichha shakti, is the power of desire. If ichha shakti is not there, nothing can happen. Okay says that 
uh, there is an inner space in the fruit where seeds germinate. It is this space of which Paul Gray is talking about. I said emerging. In fact, this is a sort of emergence. It is slowly emerging, and uh, I'm controlling the uh, uh, image, but uh, not totally, because uh, when you work with a brush in a loaded uh, brush loaded with ink, which is moving on the surface, uh, the uh, brush itself takes some liberties and uh, forms image which I have not uh, quite decided. I went to Zane Xavier's high school in Bombay. I was brought up by the Christian Jesuit priests. The cross was in front of the class for nearly nine years. From the age of five to 14, I lived with the cross every day from morning to evening. It left a deep impact. Just as you can use the power of silence, you can use the power of gray in color. All my school years uh, went, uh, I mean, in a silence from myself to the outwards and from the outwards to myself, because I was absorbed in my own thoughts. Even if you look at the cloud, there is content. There's content everywhere, in a glass of water, in everything, in rocks, in trees, but it is not a content which is verbal, which you can verbalize. Emotion is everywhere, but what I'm against is verbalized content. When I went to Paris, I was on my own, alone, and uh, also, the uh, kind of um, uh, things I saw, like the images I saw, and just walking on the road, even if I was going shopping, and suddenly you walk across an antique uh, shop and you stop and see in the show, show window uh, an African mask. It's hypnotic, you know. I mean, a sight like that I'd never seen in Bombay.
by removing, I am adding. That means I am adding to the power of the image by removing, by creating absences. Like uh, the kind of presence I want will only have the presence if I create an absence. So uh, the, 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 you know, dialectics is between absence and presence. She used to sing early in the morning at three o'clock and the whole house echoed with it. I didn't realize it then, but looking back, it was an extraordinary and magical experience that was created by her voice. What should not happen, that if you draw the breast, it looks like a breast. It has to keep the basic uh, circle, the sphere. If it begins to look like a breast, there is something wrong with the form. No line or no form should lose its original character of belonging to uh, the language of form. It should not stop belonging to language of form and become an organ or a part of the body. That would be a fault. So it is a kind of game which I am playing with what is happening and the degree to which you can control it. I am not saying that it is out of my control, but it is not completely within my control also. So supposing something goes wrong, I've got to incorporate it. I have to make the error a part of my strategy and this is where the game is being played. So the final image, when it appears, is a shock and a surprise to myself. And if I'm intrigued by it, if I'm uh, really surprised, then I would uh, say that, uh, you know, uh, I've done something worthwhile. The second class is the real life going on. Or I haven't gone into the compartment where people put their vegetable things and luggage just for the looking at people. So my travel from Andheri to Grand Road in a luggage compartment is extraordinary. For me, it is a natural choice to paint a female. But the matter doesn't end there. It only begins there. Essentially, what interests me is the form. Not only the form, but the rendering. For instance, I know that um, uh, if I use the brush stroke, what is, the, what is important is the stroke of the brush and not the body. I am representing through the brush stroke the body, but the body has to go from there, the flesh has to go. The only the brush stroke remains. Now and then somebody asks you, uh, are you happy? I said, I don't know what happened. He says, I'm not concerned with it. Because in life, everything exists, happiness exists, pain exists, suffering exists. Everything exists and we have to accept it. For me, the most important thing is not the form of the eye, but the form of the look. Look is formless. Look has no form. The eye has form. Look has no form. But you come to a point and say, this is the look of a painting.
what uh, affected me were images. I was very image conscious. And I remember an incident when my father had brought me some biscuits. And they were in the forms of different animals. And uh, um, uh, in the evening, uh, when my father came back from office, he said, how did you like the biscuits? I said, they were wonderful. Huh? He said, did they taste good? I said, I didn't eat them. Uh, they were so wonderful to look at. And he was quite astonished, you know. Adi Nidhanam Brahma, Shabda Tattam, Yadaksharam. Anadi is, Adi is the beginning. Anadi, it has no beginning. Anadi Nidhanam is treasure. Anadi Nidhanam Brahma, Shabda Tattam, the principle of the word. Yadaksharam, this is the word, Akshara. Sharir, the body goes. Aksharir is the word which is imperishable.